We've labeled these years the everything bubble. That's because asset prices continue to skyrocket. We're seeing the stock markets go up. We're seeing Bitcoin go up. We're seeing cryptocurrencies in bubbles producing your 30, 40, 100x returns. We're also seeing asset prices like real estate continue to rise. That's because we're in the final stages of the 18.6 year cycle. Now, if some of that doesn't make sense, stick around, hit that like and subscribe button. These are going to be the easiest years to be making money in the markets. But there is always a warning and a disclaimer that comes with easy times. Following easy times are the tough times. Remember that old meme, the good times create weak men and weak men create bad times. That's what we are in right now. The good times are here to be making gains, but you need to protect those gains. Stick around. Let's have a look at what is coming up for the month of April, specifically for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, even if there is some sort of correction forming on Bitcoin. There is a lot of good to come from these markets. So here we are, your home of macro cycle analysis. We are up to 37x returns from a month ago, inside a joke, but we'll get through that now. Links in the top of the video description for the free TIA report. You guys know the deal. Let's kick it off with a quick review of the macro so far. Last 24 hours saw a new all-time high close for the S&P 500. The Nasdaq is slightly lagging on that. We'll get to that in a moment. We also see home prices, new all-time highs. Now that's for the US, it's for Australia, it's, uh, if I can get an A out here, it's for the UK. You're seeing it in Canada, New Zealand, Western developed countries in desirable areas. I needed to add that because some people say it doesn't happen in their area. You need a desirable area like your major cities. And of course, there is the ripple effect on regional towns as well with asset prices also going up there. Bitcoin, all-time highs, or at least trading around all-time highs at the moment. Unemployment rate remains steady at low, uh, historically low levels. Inflation, 35 straight months above 3%. Fed expected to cut rates three times this year with the first cut coming in June. Now, we've been following these interest rates. They have been moving to the right on our scale here, suggesting less interest rate cuts, which is also suggesting that asset prices will continue to remain strong. Now we're down to three for the year of 2024, when at the beginning of the year, it was somewhere around eight. Basically, every single meeting, they were looking for an interest rate cut. So things are looking very strong in this everything bubble. And just to that last point here with inflation, 35 straight months above 3%, so above what the Fed's target was, even if there is inflation and there's money printing and there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines, you're still going to see these asset prices increase because there is no other place to be putting your money right now. If it's on the sidelines, you're losing against inflation. And if it's in cash trying to get an interest rate return, you're still losing against the stock markets. You're losing against Bitcoin. And so there is this big mad rush to get in to the market when everyone has missed the boat at the lower prices, your early to, uh, 2020. And then of course, late 2022 as well, when everyone was expecting a recession as the market was basically putting in new uh, well, lows for the cycle here in October, 2022, the banking crisis low. And then of course, October, 2023, that's all part of this story into the everything bubble in this last stage of the 18.6 year cycle, we now know as the winner's curse stage. And that term winner's curse was coined by Fred Harrison here. This is the guy that got this cycle right from the 1980s into the early 2000s for the global financial crisis, that property boom and then collapse, and is now calling for the same thing, going for three in a row over the span of 40 plus years. This is phenomenal. Stick around with it. It is the last stages of this cycle, the winner's curse, but we're looking for pretty big gains at this point, the last stage of the cycle. Now, how this all comes about is because everyone has been waiting, at least in this last stage, for this pullback. You probably heard pullbacks of 5% or 10%. The market's overbought. There is uh, a lot going on here. There should be a correction coming soon, but it doesn't happen. I uh, labeled the majority of these corrections on the way up from this October low. Essentially, they have all been about one to two, maybe 3% if you're lucky. You can see the most recent one here before the market just pushed higher to a new all-time high close for the S&P 500. Mind you, this is what we're looking at here. 1.1%, 1 1.9, 1 1.8, 2.5, 1.8. 
these corrections have been getting quite small. And so the, the mindset, the market psychology, essentially, most are waiting for lower prices. It doesn't come. And then essentially, they're just trying to chip away at the market, get into it as it continues to rise, hoping for a bigger correction to put the rest of their money into the market. We've been told for years that there wasn't enough money. Credit is uh, skyrocketing. People can't pay back their credit cards. Meanwhile, the markets have been going up from that point. There's, of course, a lot to unpack there. We're focused on the markets here because essentially we need to understand where the money is actually going. Prices are going up. It's a supply demand issue. More money is going in. Prices continue up at this point. We don't see an end to that, at least in the short term over the coming sort of six to 12 months over 2024 into 2025. That leads us over into cryptocurrencies. We're looking at search volume here for Bitcoin and crypto. Bitcoin in your red, crypto in your blue. They've been down since Bitcoin hit a new fresh all-time high in early March, which suggests that retail is still on its way into the space. It has had its uh, pretty significant peaks. We take a look at five years here. Bitcoin's still nowhere near the peaks of the 2021 bubble. And we're expecting that this bubble is going to be even bigger than the last bubble. Now, of course, I don't have the crystal ball. We're just looking at what is now occurring in the markets from those lows of 2020 and 2022 with asset prices climbing very quickly at the moment with very short pullbacks. So in terms of the Google search volume, it can reach some peaks and have a bit of a pullback. So far over the course of the last six or so months, we're seeing higher lows on search volume. It has it goes through uh, significant peaks, has pullbacks, again, significant peaks. You can see we had ETF here in January, new all-time high here. So people are searching Bitcoin in March, and now we're having a slight pullback here. Probably going to get some more volume again come the halving in another few weeks' time. So we'll keep a lookout for this to ensure that we're still seeing increased search volumes. You can see from the previous cycle, that was your uh, peaks through January and February, then the crash in May of 2021. And the important point to note here is the all-time high for Bitcoin was around this type of search volume. So it didn't really go much higher in terms of price, sixty-five dollars to $69,000. And the search volume really did die out from that point. It only came back when the market put in some new lows around May and June of 2022. That's why this thing still remains very important to have a look at. That follows yesterday's extreme greed, last week's extreme greed, last month's extreme greed, and the possibility that it remains elevated for a period of time. You probably heard me say that multiple times now. Like what happened in the previous cycle, going through those few months there from November into February, flush outs can occur in the market sentiment. But even if that flush out occurs, the price of Bitcoin was still higher than it was. So we're still putting in higher lows, even though the market sentiment reversed. It's a good way to flush out all of the extra hype, just like the liquidity gets flushed out of the market with the uh, the leverage traders getting wiped out as they're trying to go long or short. They just get flushed out when things get to the extremes. Onto Bitcoin, looking at the daily through to the weekly and then the monthly, we have some tables to have a look at as well when it comes to the forward returns for Bitcoin over April and over the next six months as well. So a quick recap of the last 24 hours. This was the bar here. This is where we sit now for the 27th coming into the 28th now. It was a close above 69K. These are the two critical areas that I had on the chart last couple of days now because 69 is the previous old all-time high. Very important. 65K in April is not the old all-time high. Uh, I know many like to look at that point here, but this is the point of the new all-time high price. That's why you can see the price be, uh, playing ball with 69K more often than what it's interested in going back down to 65. There's not as much happening down at those levels. 69 is the number to beat at the moment. 72 and a half to the upside, at least for the short term. When I go to my four hour chart, you can see this was the big flush out bar, almost like a, a gotcha for the Wyckoff fanatics out there, meaning that you had a lot of people getting in late. The market came down on this bar came down again and crushed those guys who were in at higher prices. And then they were quickly in losses of 10, 15 or so percent. So that's why this area is quite critical. I think it's always important to have a reason as to why something is important on the chart, even if it is in this four hour period, especially as the market keeps bouncing around at these levels. So you can see we tried uh, in the last several hours, we got to 71,800. So 
about $700 short of that 72K top. And this is similar type of analysis that I used back in May of 2021, when most were calling for 80 and 100K Bitcoin, we were following the same type of analysis when it comes to Wyckoff theory here, looking at these bars that uh, basically capture the late people in the market who remain in positions hoping that they get their money back. So that's where we currently sit at the moment. It's a shorter term thing. This is your milk type of strategy, looking at your uh, aged milk here. Let's see how we go over the next one to maybe three days to see if Bitcoin can get above this. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. We've got a longer outlook here because the day to day is still undecided. And I want to have a better picture of what could happen over the, over the coming months. We are in our seventh month of green for Bitcoin. Even though January was a very small month here, 0.65, you can see we had four, five, six. We're into our seventh month. So if Bitcoin's able to close above its open in the next four days, that would give us our seventh straight month. It's only happened once, uh, other one other time in history back in 2012. You had a couple of minor months there as well, sort of 0.8% and 4% and 1%, similar to what we got this time, 0.6. We had a 4% here and uh, a 9%. Nonetheless, seven of those months have been green. We haven't seen eight green months in a row. It doesn't mean we have to collapse. I'm still obviously extremely bullish. We've got plenty of great things coming up, especially with the everything bubble and the markets continuing to grind, money getting printed, lots coming into the space and plenty of money still sitting on the sidelines, hoping for bigger corrections, which is potentially why we haven't seen those bigger corrections. So moving forward into April, we have 13 data points over the course of Bitcoin's history. 10 of those were winners, three of those were losers, giving us about 70% rate uh, to hit a green month. Now, if we take out the uh, the bear years, 2014, 2018, 2022, that increases the rate to about 80%. So it looks like April should be a green. However, we have had seven green months in a row. So I think that's something to keep in mind. Now, over to the six-month returns. We're looking at if you were to buy on April 1st and sell on September 30th, what have the returns been like in the past? Of course, past results aren't indicative of future guaranteed results, but we're just looking at the possibilities here, the probabilities. We uh, will take out, well, let's leave in all of them so far. We can see from uh, the data we have 13 of these six month periods, seven of them winners, six of them losers. So not a great result here. I wouldn't want to be betting on it. There's only a 54% chance of it being green over the next six months. Should we take out the bear years, 2018, 2022, 2014, it bumps it up to a 70% win rate. So there is the possibility that we would potentially see green in this stage of the cycle doesn't mean that it goes straight up. I hope many of us understand that by now. There is the possibility of it pausing for a little while, as I'll show you in a moment. But those, re those results are looking much better than if we were to leave the bearish years in as well. So we've got 2022. What if we just look at the year, the second year in the bull market? That's the way I wanted to uh, bring it up. 2015 was the year after the bear market year. 2019 was the year after the bear market year and 2023 was the year after the bear market year. That then brings the rates up even better, about an 86% chance that we would see green come September 30th. Just keep that in the back of your mind as we move forward with the rest of the analysis. Now, these tables that I'm working from are part of our new upgraded TIA indicator suites. Absolutely brand new. This is coming up. If you want to be notified when our indicator suites is available, link in the top of the video description, subscribe to the free TIA report, and you'll be notified when that is released. That gives you a lot of forward data to have a look at through Bitcoin, plenty of stocks here, and we continue to add more to the list. Along with the stock markets, your indices here, you can look at this across six months. You can look at it annually. You can go back and look at the, the monthly returns here and you can even select any of these types of cryptos, stocks and stock markets as well. So this stuff is very powerful for your investment strategies moving forward. And as I said, if you want to have a, a look at this when it is available, check out the link in the top of the video description here. Get on the email list and we'll let you know when that is available. Bitcoin's just three weeks out from the halving. We've been up for seven months. So coming up to seven green months, 
In terms of our swing indicator, we've got six months up and I'll get to that data in just a moment. Could we see seven on the swing chart and eight green months? Let's have a look at what's happened in the past for the halving era. Going back to 2020, we had the halving in May. Now through that period, you could see there was about 12 to 13 weeks where the price essentially went sideways. It wasn't like price just didn't go higher than where it currently was. For example, we're at 74,000. It's not like it can't go to 74 and a half, 75. We looked at some other prices recently, but just looking at the previous halving, the price did stall out here for three months. That's just one example. Now let's look back to the previous example here. That was two weeks before the halving, and then it took six months until it could break out of that high. I hear you already thinking that this won't happen. I'm not suggesting that it has to happen this way, just looking at what's happened in the past. And yes, if you're still referring to ETFs and they've got to be buying up everything, that is a possibility. I'm still expecting much, much higher prices, but ETFs can sell as well. And we've seen that over the last few weeks. We had some of the biggest outflows on ETFs, and that's, of course, brought the price down on Bitcoin. Not forever, but just keep it in mind that even though there are ETFs, it doesn't mean that they have to buy the price every single day for the price to be pushed up. So we have a couple of points here, three months and six months at around this halving point. Now there is one difference here and we only have a few data points. So before you get on the old, this time is different bandwagon, you need more than three data points to suggest that this time is different. If you had 20, 30, 50 data points and something different happened then, well then sure, you're probably warranted to use the term this time is different. But when you only have two or three data points, it's uh, pretty silly to think that every point has to be exactly the same. So we're looking at here, that these times were underneath the old all-time high, whereas now we're trading around the old all-time high at the halving. So let's have a look at the all-time high tests before the market broke out. Now we have one more here on the halving, it's basically very, very similar. You had the halving, a few months down, the peak there, nine weeks until it broke out of that particular zone, but then the peak into the breakout of the previous peak, that was about 22 weeks. So again, similar sorts of thing there. When we look at the breakout for the all-time high now, you can see we had a close test here in January and then the final breakout here 16 weeks later. So roughly about four months. Then we look at the previous one in 2020. There was your closest test one week, another four weeks to get to the breakout. So that was a very quick one. I think we, some of us can remember that and you've probably seen this been referenced before, roughly about four weeks. And where we currently sit now uh, is... We're into our second week now before we can break out to that new all-time high. So if we saw four weeks, that would take us just before the halving. If we see around 16 weeks, well, that could take us out to roughly July. Everything is still within question at the moment and there's nothing to suggest that we have to break out here and that there isn't a possibility of a correction. There could be a sideways market, especially when we look at where it has come from, the power in this move, the overall power in the market, especially with the S&P 500, the asset price is still climbing. And of course, where we, uh, as I've said, where we sit in the price already is a test to the lower side at 60K. And now we're getting some closes up here around that $70,000. Now, the next piece of evidence for our everything bubble, the possibility of some pretty significant pumps in altcoins. This is going to give us that opportunity to be buying in should the results play ball. We're looking at the swing indicator here in yellow. We've had 58 monthly swings over the course of Bitcoin's entire history. We have five months or more in one swing being uh, about a quarter of the time. So 24% of the time, Bitcoin would show five months in a row, lower highs, lower lows, or higher highs, higher lows. Same um, example here for six months. So using the same rules would be 14%. That's what we currently sit in right now. Now, if we were to see that extend into April and push a little higher here, that would drop us down to 7% of the time Bitcoin has done that, pushing into a new uh, seventh month in a row with higher highs and higher lows. The probabilities are really starting to drop off here. That's not a bad thing. This is the exciting time where there could be the opportunities to get into cryptos again without getting into that runaway bull market. Before we get into that runaway bull market stage, and I got that to get into with the altcoin charts as well. So I'm excited to get to that particular data. Now, looking at five months or more per cycle, in the past, we've seen the 2013 cycle 
have three plus one. So this is the 2013 cycle here. We have had three times where Bitcoin has done five months or more in a row. One, two, three and three. So we've got those three streaks plus one in the bear market. Then we had 2017, same sort of thing. Nice big streak here, another streak, and then another streak into the top. 2021, we had five streaks, basically a five months or more in a row. So Bitcoin can go on very significant runs. That's the point of the data here. It can go on and give us those nice big moves. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, and we had five. One go in the opposite direction, but it was still within the bull market. So it can go on these very long streaks. The point here is we've gone on a long streak. We have one presented so far. That's for 2024, 2025 in this bull market, which we're still waiting to see where that top comes in. Looking at the results of the past, there could be another three of these streaks to go until we get to the peak. So any sort of correction might still give us that opportunity to get in on one of those extra long streaks. Now we have some of the mega stuff to look at. This is the altcoin space. Cryptocurrency market cap, this includes everything. Stable coins, Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, you name it, it is in here. What we're looking at here is the tipping point for the altcoins. This period is at your first monthly lower swing top out of the bear market. So the bear market started, you go to bounce, and then it falls into its low. This cycle, you had the top, it fell, it uh, bounced into its first lower swing top, and then it fell into its final low. The point with the first monthly lower swing tops is basically the complacency bounce. That's the point where the investors are still hoping that we're going to see another big pump up. It doesn't come short lived and then it collapses from there. That's what you can see in this one as well. Huge gains to the upside. We're still probably somewhere in this stage then you get the dump and then the complacency bounce into that final low, okay? That is the critical area there. It's also at the 50% in the previous cycle. You can see right through the middle there, top to bottom, 50% market breaking out of that point. This cycle, however, the first monthly lower swing top is higher than the 50%. So the, the market has already broken through the 50% level. It paused for a little and then broke through. The good news here is that it looks like there is a lot more strength in the overall market, so the crypto market cap here, the total cryptocurrency market cap, than what we had seen in that previous cycle at that same time. So this is also leading to this stage of the cycle where things could potentially blow up here. So back to this particular chart, we've got a couple of weeks above these levels. This is all still looking good. Closes below 2.17 trillion over the coming weeks might not be the greatest thing, but it's still not the end of the world. The end of the world would probably come somewhere around 1.87 and potentially lower. We're a long way from there at the moment. Doesn't seem like that's on the cards. At the end of the day, no one knows what happens on the black side here. We're just looking at probabilities based on key turning points in the market here, basically support and resistance levels. So closes above here, still a good thing. Pullbacks, that would be the opportunities to get into those strong altcoins. Going from the total cryptocurrency market cap to the cryptocurrency market cap without Bitcoin, ETH, and the stable coins so that you can get a clearer picture of altcoins overall. Now, this one is showing a slightly weaker picture, but that is absolutely normal, especially when you have thousands, if not millions of other uh, cryptos, most of which are probably not going to make it. So that's why you really need to be in those strong altcoins. And I've done videos on the channel explaining which ones are the, uh, how to look for those strong altcoins. So be sure to subscribe, check those videos out as well. Now, in terms of this chart here, we are at the 50% turning point. We're at the uh, tipping point here above that first monthly lower swing top, as we've covered in the previous chart. We've broken out of the accumulation range, we've put in our corrections, and now we seem to be in that waiting period before we can get going again. Take a look back at the previous cycle. You got the first monthly lower swing top, basically your complacency bounce, which then uh, calls that the top is in and it goes to a new low. And it's also at the 50% level. So we've got a couple of areas here, tipping point, 50% point, a breakout of that zone is probably gonna send us flying like it did in the last cycle. Again, I'm saying this with uh, only looking back at that previous cycle because that's the data that we have. You can see from the cycle before that as well, I don't have, well, there is no other data to this side of the chart, but you can see once it did break through, it basically went on a massive streak to the end, which called the end of the market. So that's a big reason to be cautious towards the end, but there's still plenty of time.
Looks like there's still plenty of time based on what we have seen before. Tipping point coming up here, the monthly swing top tipping point and 50% level. And should we see a nice big stretch to the upside as I covered in yesterday's video, any of these sort of uh, weekly pullbacks, one week's of red, are probably signaling that you're getting towards the end of that cycle. So very keen for the bull market, just keeping some thoughts in mind if you were looking to take some profits. If you just want to ride the market all the way back down, forget about any of the signals. You do you. Of course, there was still a significant correction and another attempt higher yet again. Some altcoins did a lot better in that second leg. Others didn't. That's why you don't see the move being as big as it was from the breakout of the tipping point. It just gets riskier the later you are into this cycle. Keep that in mind as we continue to break through here. Still seems like the market is building for those mega 37x potential returns for altcoins. This is a bit of a proxy here for the altcoin pump. I've got a couple of areas marked up on the chart here. You can see this red arrow here. There's the low. There's the other low for the cycle. Now, the new Bitcoin all-time high. This is, again, Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Right now, we are sitting in the month of the new Bitcoin all-time high. We're also sitting a just above the 50% level, just above the USD low for ETH, which was at $880. And we're basically sitting in this uh, support zone here, well, potential support zone if ETH BTC doesn't break down. So that's still a possibility here. Now I've looked at this area as potentially being the accumulation zone, whether it's right here at 5.2 million, maybe it's a little lower at 4.8 million Satoshis. Nonetheless, the point here is new Bitcoin all time high month. The following month was down. And then ETH went on a pretty significant run from there. So if things are similar to last time, maybe this is the move down because Bitcoin is pushing to new all-time highs. It's taking the show. Then you see another uh, red month here as Bitcoin continues on and then a reversal here for ETH as well. Now, the main point with this is we could be coming towards the end of some consolidation periods here for ETH, even if there is slightly lower prices on the ETH Bitcoin chart. What it's shown in the past is uh, basically an area to bounce from and move into new fresh prices against Bitcoin's value. Same sort of thing for Solana. And I'll get into these in future videos in far more detail. But just looking back at the previous cycle, Solana, yes, much, much weaker crypto at the time. Now a lot stronger than what it was back then. But you can see uh, also with the Bitcoin new all-time high price around November, it still went lower even against its USD value at that time. But then that was the time to skyrocket. So we're in a similar sort of period now where Bitcoin's gotten into its new all-time high. Should Solana see any sort of pullbacks here? The main point about this is if we are coming to a similar period in the market, that's the time to be very aware, to be getting into cryptos yet again, to be sort of like buying up those dips. This is the bullish side of me coming out to hopefully give you some of those positive vibes here on the channel because I do think there are still much, much bigger things to come. It's just a matter of whether your risk tolerance can cope with any sort of downside. At the end of the day, things don't always go uh, straight across or straight up. This is the market. There is possibilities of downside, but particularly during these stages of the market, if we're still in a macro bull market, which I think we are, you've got to make your own mind up, then those are the opportunities to be getting in to be riding those waves up. Can you cope with any sort of downside? That's up to you. Last thing I'm going to leave you with is this mega video here from Michael. Link is this, uh, to his channel is in the video description. Look for this Elliott Wave video here a couple of weeks ago. Even if we do see some sort of correction, it still looks like we have a mega wave five to come for assets. That could be Bitcoin, maybe it's cryptos as well. I'll leave that up to you to decide, uh, especially based on what I've shown you here in today's video. But overall, I think we've still got some pretty significant moves to the upside, especially when we look at the 18.6 year cycle. Let me know if you are as bullish about the markets over the coming years. Pinned comment down below. I'll see you guys at the next video. Till then, take care and peace out.